Wickedness is real. Oppression is real. But more real is our victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedipo to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedipo. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Father. Lord, again, speak to our hearts at this time. And move us further into the realization of your great plan for gathering us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'll be taking us through a short journey. In our discourse on the theme, Breaking New Grounds, Part 4. In Part 1, we talked about the power of self-image. And I'm sure you still remember that. In Part 2, we spoke about the cost factor. No one beats a tower without sitting down and counting the cost. And part three, we talked about the root three principle or the root power. And now in part four, we'll be looking at the power of information. The power of information. And I'd like you to be very settled because something will be placed in your hand today that we keep driving you the remaining days of your life. The power of information. Nothing empowers like knowledge. I've said often and again that to be informed is to be transformed and to be uninformed is to be deformed. Information is both the gateway to man's advancement and the cure for all of his frustrations. It is the key factor to man's success in the race of life. May I say this? Every great destiny rides on the wheels of information. And every great story begins with access to great information. Get off the screen, please. Therefore, there is no substitute for information in your quest for a change of position. Maybe this will help your understanding. What fuel is to a vehicle is what information is to a vision. A vehicle without fuel cannot move, cannot perform. So a vision that is void of information will sure become a victim of stagnation. Being informed is not just knowing something. It is possessing a working knowledge of that thing. Like Jesus said, or was said about Jesus in John chapter 6 verse 6, He Himself knew what He would do. Not just knowing what exists. Or just an idea. He knew what he would do. And when he did it, there was a proof that he knew the right thing to do to bring a solution in that situation.
This is so important. So I'd like to define information as um, any bit of news that influences your thoughts and actions. Any form of news that influences your thoughts and actions. This is what information does. Information engenders or infuses motivation. A motivation provokes motion or stimulate action. And this motion is what we require to arrive at your destination. So it is from information to motivation, and from motivation to motion, and from motion to destination. So if you lack information, your vision will lack motion. And if your vision lacks motion, your destination is never in view. It is information we engage to drive our vision to its actualization. This is so important. Joseph was a great dreamer. And I'll take my text from Psalm 105 and verse 6, 16, sorry, to 22. And we see Joseph the dreamer in action. Moreover, God called for a famine upon the land, and he break the whole staff of bread. And verse 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph who was sold for his servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. And the king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. So he was not just a dreamer. He was a man of wisdom. He had depth. He had insight. He had understanding. He had revelation. There are many big dreams today. That may never see the light of the day until adequate information is explored and acquired and applied. People have always thought that power is the principal thing. But that's not correct. Your Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7 and 8. And Solomon said, wisdom is better than strength. And wisdom is better than weapons of war. Ecclesiastes 9, 16, and 18.
The first thing that manifested in Christ when he came down in pursuit of his messianic ministry was his wisdom. They were astonished at his questions and answers. They were astonished at his questions and answers. The last miracle Jesus performed before he left was in Luke 24 verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. It's after that he ascended to heaven. So the last miracle was the miracle of opening of their understanding. So it is your depth of understanding in your particular field of calling that determines how outstanding you will ever become in it. And to see how important this is, the core ministry of the Holy Spirit is to quicken our understanding. That is core ministry. We saw the seven spirits of God listed in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. And in verse 3 he said, And shall make him of quick understanding. So the summary of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to quicken our understanding supernaturally. And when he was coming, he said, When he, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, will come to you, John fourteen twenty six, he will teach you all things, and will bring you to your, to your remembrance all things whatsoever you have heard of me. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things. That's his ministry. John 16, and 13 to 15, he said, He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever shall he, he shall hear, that shall he teach, and he will show you things to come. Oh, eyes have not seen or ears heard. It has not entered the heart of any man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. So every pace setter rides on the wings of revelation. God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. And the byproduct of those deep things are the things we engage in setting the pace and blazing the trail. Deep things. First Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. And because height is a function of depth in construction technology, the depth of a foundation is what determines the height to which a building goes. So your depth of understanding is what determines the height of your accomplishment. This is very important. And we understand from scriptures, looking at the case of Joseph, the Bible says, Or defines wisdom as applied knowledge. Whosoever hear these things of my hand doeth them. The same is a wise man. Matthew seven, twenty-four to twenty-eight. So wisdom is simply applied knowledge. It is operating by the working knowledge of the truth. He sent a man before them, even Joseph. And Joseph accomplished its vision by the power of revelation at his disposal. 
There are many balloon dreamers, people with dreams that will refuse to take responsibility of what it takes for, to realize and actualize their dreams. So they are all there. You may succeed by a number of factors, but you can only sustain your success by adequate knowledge. Because wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. There be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the news you assess is what determines the events of your life. You are transformed by the news at your disposal. The news at your disposal is what generates the news that you make in your pursuit. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'd like to believe God with you tonight for a new taste for information. You need it. If you must make the most of your calling. Someone has said, sow a thought and you reap an act. Sow an act, you reap a habit. Sow a habit, and you reap a character. And sow a character, then you reap a destiny. What does that mean? Every book is the author's thoughts in print. So every thought you receive, if truly received, we form an habit. It will change the way you think. So a thought you reap and act. It will stimulate a step of action. And when you keep at that action, it becomes a habit. When that habit is fully formed, it becomes your characteristic. And because the way you live is what determines what you become, that graduates into your destiny. Thoughts are very powerful. Thirty years ago, I was reading one of those daily materials of Ora Robert, and he painted a graphic picture of the eagle. For the first time in my life, I read about the eagle. And that opened me up to understanding the challenges of growing into adulthood and fulfilling destiny. That the mother eagle will not be there forever. And to graduate, you in, to graduate the eaglet into an eagle, he must subject him to risks. Ah, that strengthened and fortified me for the journey of life. That when the mother eagle seemed to have removed his back, and I was about going to crash, he comes on there and says, boy, that's how to become an eagle. And picks you up again. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Then you get back to the nest. And then never would you want to stay on the back of the mother eagle again because you don't know when it will fly out again. So it gives you more time until you forget the risk, the risk flight you took. And then one of those days you are just having a nice time on his back and whoo, zoomed out in the air. And again, so hard into the sky. And then while you are up, up, up further than where you were before, he removed his back. And when you are about crashing into, on the rock, he comes back and picks you again. Now, that bit of information gave me the elasticity required in the pursuit of my assignment that I came into in the future.
what information does is to help you to become self-motivated by the things you have gathered. So you can go on. I read the story of Dr. Nabdi Azikwe years ago, and I saw that one day in London, he was down below zero, and wanted to commit suicide, and went to the rail and lay down there for the train to crush him. And one white man saw him and saw the train coming and ran there and took the boy and flung him. Imagine if Nigeria had not had a man like Dr. Namdi Azikwe. <laughs> and so the Lord spoke to me by that information. You are never at your wit's end as long as you are with me. Information is what engenders the power for self-motivation. You need it. So a thought, you reap an act, so an act, and you reap a habit, so a habit, you reap a character, and so a character, and you reap a destiny. It was Mike Murdoch that said, you don't decide your destiny, you decide your habit, and your habits decide your destiny. Every truly self-motivated person is a man and a woman armed with current, vibrant information in this field. You cannot go beyond the information at your disposal. The brighter you see, the faster you go. The more informed you are, the greater the results you command. This is so important. I used to ride a Volkswagen Beetle, and most of the time the lights will be looking downwards. And when you drive in the night, you park by the roadside to watch for any car that has bright light, then you quickly dovetail and struggle to follow him. But that's not like having your life. In fact, they can mistake you for an arm robber and throw fire on you. So if you notice military person or seeker, you just pass because you don't want trouble. You need your own life to determine your own speed. You need your own life to determine your own speed. People in this part of the world celebrate their dreams without taking responsibility in Finding what drives the dream. And nothing drives your dream to actualization like relevant information. I see information as the currency of destiny with the term is your purchasing power in the market of life. Information is powerful. Ministry is my calling, my career, if you like, my profession. I won't need to open any book to tell you what ministry is and what ministry has done in Nigeria, in Africa, and in the world. I couldn't make the journey. I was invited on the 100 year celebration of the charismatic movement in America this last year. It's so vital for you to be thoroughly educated in your career, thoroughly educated in your field. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. What will I have done for them that I have not done? But they are limited by their ignorance. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 1 to 13. You are the choice of vine. You are planted on the most fruitful hill. There is an edge around you to protect and defend you against all satanic assaults. Yet, you are not delivering results. 
And he said, they are damned, they are battered and beaten because they have no knowledge. In every examination, it is those who have the facts that get the marks. Is that correct? It's not the volume of what you have written. It is the facts within what you have written. It's the facts. In every examination, it is the students with the facts that make the marks or get the marks. So you need facts. I've said often and again, no, you don't, you cannot fail with facts. It is facts that make fat. You cannot fail with facts because it is facts that make fat. This is very important. You need the fact if you must get the marks. You need the fact if you must make the marks. This is what happens with information hunting. Every news you get stimulates the moves you make, and the moves you make generate the waves you cause. And the waves you cause is what generates the news you make. So from news, you make moves. From moves, you cause waves. And the waves you cause makes news. And the cycle continues. I call it, I call it the information power cycle. Every information you get stimulates motion. A motion generate results and results make news and you get more news so you cause more waves and you get cause more waves you make more news and it goes on and on and on like that so wake up god will give you a dream he will leave you to go find the information to drive it all he gave them was the talent like pastor Ty was saying and they all went and traded it. So the know-how of each one is what determines the results they generated. Someone has said, and I, I really felt very negative and bad about it. If you want to hide anything from a black man, he said, write it in a book. It's an adage. You want to hide anything from a black man, write it in a book. He won't find it. It is not part of his culture to explore. He's waiting for things to happen on their own. If you want to hide anything from a black man, he said, write it in a book. And for those of us that travel, and I know many of us travel one, again and again, you sit down with Black people on a long trip, they will talk till they arrive there. Other nationals will be there on their computers and with their literature and writing and making notes, but not the black man. May you not sit beside a Nigerian and a Ghanaian at the same time. That is talk unlimited. They will talk from here till forever. They will be those days and still be talking. And when they finish, they said, Do you, don't you have something else to say? But our generation must change that proverb. <laughs> the difference, therefore, between success and failure is information. The difference between poverty and prosperity is information. <laughs> Twenty-five years ago, I undertook an adventure. And I said, Lord, show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. Because behind every great success story is a secret. 
In the industrial world, they call it trade secret. Trade secret. There's a trade secret. There's a trade secret. So I took two books in my hand. I wasn't going to just open my eyes to the sky and say, show me. Let me find out from those who found it what they found. So I began reading. And I'm glad Bishop was there with me on that tree. I think he went with me on that tree. I began reading in my room. On the third day, the heavens erupted. I saw it. And I saw a networking of deep scriptural covenants. I stood up in my short knicker and screamed and screamed, I can never be poor. So behind this uncheckered prosperity, unstoppable prosperity, was a great discovery from which I have not recovered. Just three days redefined my destiny. Three days which has come to redefine the destiny of many people today who are partakers of this grace. Three days only. Three days only. Until you place appropriate value on information, your struggle continues. Information is the difference between health and sickness. The difference between slavery and royalty. The difference between winning and losing. And the difference between begging and giving. So it's all information. I've never stepped on anybody's door in 25 plus years of ministry to require and help. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I have told leaders, presidents, the first day I ask you of any favor, let it be the last day you take my counsel, I'll never need it. You don't know your stuff, you're finished. But to know that, I said to God, now that you have called me, who pays me? Then exploration began through scriptures. And then he gave to me, myself, I knew when I collected it. Ah, spiritual things are tangible. My Bible says the word of the Lord which Isaiah saw. It's not which he had, which he saw. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2. The word of the Lord which Isaiah saw. Isaiah saw, not Isaiah had. <laughs> I saw the reality of my appointment in the Kingdom Service Commission. And the terms of reference that guarantees my continuous pay. And I plugged into it. And 25 years after, because I'm still intact on the job, the pay continues. <laughs> Information. Oh, I'm blessed with loving people in this ministry. They love me with all their heart. But they never hear a call from me. Hey, there's something here. Would you be there? I remember at Covenant University we had three weeks to go and we needed 363 million during our heat of construction. It wasn't mentioned on this altar. We just telephoned the headquarters that monitors the operations and they take over. Those who do, no. And only those who ask questions are entitled to answers. You never get an answer on questions you have not asked. You have called me. Who pays me? So, be, so beg, I am ashamed. I can't. So let's settle the arrangement. What is the contract like? Am I appointed to cater for myself? He said, no. Carry no force, no script. I don't need your saving. I'm responsible. What do I do then? Keep preaching and showing the glasses of the kingdom. I will be there to supply your needs. Keep imparting the people spiritually. I'll be responsible for your particular needs. Simple. 
You need information to be free from frustration. Therefore, don't stop learning. Everything you are today is a result of the information at your disposal yesterday. Until your mind is renewed, your life cannot be transformed. Until there is a change within, there cannot be change without. Until something changes within you, nothing changes around you. Every change in a man's life begins from within. And that is what information does. You cannot be genuinely informed without making appropriate moves. Unfortunately today, learning stops for many as soon as they graduate from school. But Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much of a man who is not wiser today than he was yesterday. Help me tell your neighbor, the world is on the move. Only men on the move can make the most of their journey. In this moving world. Now according to geographical science, the world is constantly in motion around its own orbit. Theol Osborn said when you stop learning, you start dying. Learning is designed for continuity. We live in a changing world, so you need to keep pace. With current knowledge. You need to keep pace with current knowledge. Henry Ford was the one that said, When you stop learning, you are old, whether at 20 or at 80. And if you keep learning, you are young, whether at 80 or at 20. So he said the best thing, therefore, is to keep your mind young. If you want to stay vibrant in the pursuit of your business goals, then keep learning. Today the world is a global village. There is unlimited access to information on the net. What a world that we are living in. In our own time, it's only, you either get hard copy or you don't have access. It is hard copy that will come forever until you go to where they tell you you can't reach it. There were no addresses that couriers could deliver materials into. I believe it's time to review where we have been and determine how to go forward. You need to place appropriate value on information. And that takes a lot of discipline. Your intellectual capacity it's very crucial to the fulfillment of your destiny. You need to be vast in your field to a point that you can make quality decisions both to expand and to sustain what is on ground. That takes a lot of discipline. Information does not jump on people. It's only available and accessible to explorers is a product of committed search. Therefore, nobody is responsible for where you are, but you, not even the devil. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.
Every word you gather today is waiting for you tomorrow. Words are seeds. And whosoever sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And whosoever sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Readers are leaders. If you want to become a leading person in your field, then become an addicted learner. Paul the Apostle, when he was called, he went on a three-year campaign. Come on, say three-year campaign. Three-year campaign. That's why when he came back, he was far above the apostles that stayed with Jesus. He went on a three-year explorative adventure. In the truth, he was on the far left. So to ever get up back on the right, he had to go out and school himself. As soon as he returned, he was a vibrant preacher. You need a campaign to move to the next phase of your business, the next phase of your career. Remember, common sense at best will produce common results. With common sense, we're only heading for a common future. Everyone, therefore, aiming at an outstanding future, must be committed to rubbing its little mind with greater mind, thereby becoming sharper than you can imagine. Because iron sharpens iron. What we do by reading and hearing from men and women ahead of us is rubbing our little mind on their great mind, thereby tapping into the greatness in their mind. Proverbs 27 verse 17, iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. And wisdom makes the face of a wise man to shine. So we tap into wisdom by rubbing our minds on greater minds. Every outstanding leader in every field of human endeavor is a committed reader. Therefore to be a man of Empath, you must be committed to insatiable hunger for ever increasing insight in your field. So what I said, you will be the same that you are today in five years time, except for two things. The books you read and the people with whom you work. The books you read and the company you keep. The books you read and the company you keep. Our financial management system today came out of my access into the Pijo Automobile Nigeria information. Their financial strategy was what formed the basis today of what we use in our ministry. And I got that 1985 when there was nothing to really account for. Our entire ministry income in 1985 was 55,000 plus in the entire year. But we already found a formula for building a financial empire. By placing a clear limit on what is allowed on recurrent expenditure. We have beaten that principle. We can teach the world today how to build a financial fortune. We are not financially stressed at all through strategic planning, which was assessed by information. You'll be the same you are today in five years' time, except for two things the book you read and the company you keep. Therefore, every vision. Is at the mercy of information. The future of every vision lies in the quality of information that you are running with. 
It takes being truly studious to fulfill a glorious destiny. It takes being truly studious to fulfill a glorious destiny. Paul said to Timothy, he said, study. If you don't want to end up stupid, study. If you don't want to end up stupid, study. So show yourself approved unto God as workmen that will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Do you know why we have poor leadership in Africa, in the political arena? They are an army of unstudious people. There are no references in their speeches of any kind. No. Some of our leaders cannot answer basic economic questions. They can. And they are sitting as chief executive, according to them, over various local government councils, state executive council, even in the federal. When you listen to men like Putin, men like Blair, you could see a bank of information being exhumed by people. The speeches are calculated. The presentations are articulate. You can almost eat their words when they are saying it. That's what we have in Africa. Almost every leader have their speeches written for them fully. They don't have any input. Even to read it, they have a problem. That's why we are where we are. When the blind lead the blind, they are sure to crash into the gutter. So you can't afford to be blind and see a fact to be a great leader. How can you be in a business where you cannot, you don't even understand what you are doing? You don't know the trend in that business today. You are, you are just like a market woman, just going about selling a force, selling the yam and going back. You don't even know how much you bought it, how much you sold. There is no record, no nothing. That's not how to build an empire. Let me take you through in a few minutes my adventure to date in this area. The things that I came by through my commitment to studies and what they have done in my little life. I'm doing that to help motivate you to get back to what it takes to make real marks. How many want to make real marks here? May I start with this man's story? This man was ordained into ministry in 1975. And in the same year, he was afflicted by three different diseases. High blood pressure, hypertension, and dizziness. And for that cause, he was on daily medication. Between 75 and 1982, sorry, 1992, that is 17 clear years. In those 17 years, he had two friends that were together with him in prayers and fasting for this affliction to go. He didn't go. So one day, he thought to himself, there must be an answer. Let me go find out. So he went to a bookstore. Tell your neighbor, that's where to go. Because no matter where you found yourself, he said, no temptation has ever taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. And the same temptation, he will provide a way of escape that you may be able to handle it. So there's always a way out. There's always a way up. And there's always a way forward. So he went to a bookstore and bought three books. One written by Freddie Casey Price is healing for all. And I think you should be able to ask that question by now. After 17 years of endless struggle, of prayers, of fasting, 
is healing for all. So he bought that. Then he bought my little book, Keys to Divine Health, and he bought a third one. Then he wrote me a letter and told me his story in his handwriting. Three full pages. He said, upon reading your books and following the instructions given, I declared a three-day war against Satan. And on the third day, I took communion and immediately the 17 year old bandage on me was broken. What took 17 years will not need more than three days with appropriate life. You don't have a spare life. Don't waste this one. 17 years of going in cycles was broken in three days. How many days? How many days? How many days? It was broken in three days. Broken in three days. I don't think you need one week to read that book. So one week plus three days equals ten days. So what took him 17 years would not have needed more than ten days with appropriate information. You don't have to stay on as a victim of frustration. Sit up! Not just acquiring information for information's sake, but information you want to engage to fulfill God's plan for your life. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Particularly when you see books written by people who have proved what they are saying. They will not only inform you, they will impact you. They will impact you. Years ago, I came back from a tree. That's 21 years ago. 1986. And when I came, my wife said to me, Oh, what did you bring? I said, come and see. I was so excited. And got to my study room and opened the, the box. 1986 will be how many years now? Is it 21? Okay. And it was books from top to the bottom. My wife said, what else? I said, that's all else. I said, the information in these books can make me a manufacturer of the things I will have bought. That's my sense of value for information. I can't imagine me going through the city of America buying suits. There are people who buy to sell here, so why do I go to Bakari Logan? They have it. But there are materials they don't have here. When I find them, I pick them up. When I enter the bookstore, my wife knows that that is the end of the budget. Because everything I see that applies to what I need, I buy. The issue of trousers, nobody's looking at your trousers. You are the one who is bothered. The world is so busy. Ask the person you sat with yesterday, what clothes did you wear? He didn't know. Who cares about what you wore? Nobody's interested. Nobody's interested. You have bought a rich watch. And you cover with long sleeve, and you are owing. You are owing. I mean, you mean, it doesn't make sense. Nobody can see the this one. Even when they see it, have they ever asked you what is the cost of your this one? That's your cup of tea. The only job that this one does is to give you the time. And you don't need to put 10,000 on that one to get time. There is one for 2,000, there is one for 500 naira. Let us go back and redefine our value system and see how that affects our world. 